Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. Lord, open our lips. Say Psalm 138 as found in the service leaflet antiphonally, beginning with this side. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. reading from the first book of Samuel. 
all the ill elders of Israel came together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice. Only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking for a king. He said, These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and his courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, No, but we are determined to have a king over us, so that we may be like other nations, and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Gospel of Mark. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. For people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The word of the Lord.
The Israelites want a king. Not a king in the sky with whom they can't have conversations or see. No, they want a real king. They want flesh and blood like they are. They want a human like they are, identifiable and blameable. Samuel, old and tired, has been a good prophet, but he hadn't been perfect. And his sons are no good. And so with no natural inheritors for his position of prophet, the Israelites feel like the prophet model has run its course. It was an experiment. It was good while it lasted. Moses, he was fine. Samuel, you're all right. But the jig is up. Now is their chance to get what everybody else has, which is a king. They want a king. They want a king who can solve all their problems. A king. Somebody they can see, whom they can adore, whom they can criticize, whom they can celebrate. Someone who looks like them, with whom they can identify. And, says the text, a king who can lead them into battle. Very important. Because they want to go to war, the Israelites. They want to occupy more land. They want to increase their resources. They want to conquer and enslave people. And they need a figure who can visibly lead them into battle. A sort of Israel first policy. Because following God, invisible and ethereal, just doesn't cut it for the Israelites anymore. And Samuel warns them about it. Samuel goes to God and says, God, you know they want a king. God says, yeah, I know. Samuel says they really shouldn't have a king. God says, yeah, I know. I want you to tell them what's going to be when they have a king. I want you to tell them that the king is going to take their sons and their daughters, going to take their slaves, going to take their oxen, going to take their olive trees, going to take a tenth of everything they've got, going to run their chariots all over their land. Tell them that kings are bad news. Samuel says, okay, I'll tell them. And God says, it's not going to do any good. You can tell them and do, but it's not going to do any good. Because the Israelites want, a, they want an earthly king. And they're asking for an earthly king from the great king. From God, God's self. Without any sense of irony. The Israelites are asking for a king. But as you and I know, those who participate in it rarely see the irony in which they participate. And we'll have to wait until next week's readings to see what happens when they demand their king. But suffice it to say, my friends, it's a really, really bad idea. But you know what we humans do with bad ideas? We put them on TV. <laughs> we celebrate our bad ideas. We defend our bad ideas vociferously. We make choices that are against our best interests. We engage in relationships that are against our best interests. We vote against our best interests. We maintain eating habits against our best interests. We buy houses and cars and boats and businesses, you name it that are contrary to our best interest. We're in Florida. Many of us maintain driving habits that are against our best interest and that are against the welfare of others. I drove back from Fort Lauderdale yesterday. The sermon is fresh. <laughs> we consistently choose against our best interests time and time again. So why? Why do we consistently choose against our best interest? Why do we faithfully choose things that are bad for us? Why? Because it's easier to try to control things than to let God control things. Because that's all it's about, is control. And when we try to control the world around us, we insert our own insecurities, our doubts, our fears, our weaknesses, everything that makes us who we are into the equation. And when we do that, we will screw up every time without fail because we're not God. 
My friends, we do it over and over again. We invest time and resources and energy in poor decisions because we lack faith. What would it be like if we lived our lives with faith in God instead of trying to manage everything ourselves, trying to manipulate the outcome every single time? We do it all around us, from our political structures to our interpersonal relationships. We always try to control. Always, always. What would it be like if we didn't, like the Israelites, time and again sabotage our own well-being, acting against our self-interest as a result of our fears and insecurities, our need to control the world, our reluctance to embrace the kingdom of God? When we think of the poor choices we have made over our lifetimes, and maybe you're like me, I do it every morning about 2.30 when I wake up and I'm reminded of all the poor decisions from third grade forward. <laughs> every morning. We rehearse our poor decisions. How often are those decisions, how often were those decisions based on what we thought was good at the time, but we were really too blind to see the world around us, or we knew better, and we ignored it. Were there signals and flags and warnings that we either ignored or we didn't see because we were too focused on what we wanted? That's the case with the Israelites. God warns them that having a king is a really, really bad idea, period. God is unequivocal. And they insist on having a king. You remember in the text that Stan read for us, Samuel goes through everything and he says, they're going to do it. Kings are going to do this and they're going to do this and they're going to do this and it's really bad. You really don't want a king. And the Israelites say, no, we want a king. God warns them, but they insist on it. And in the coming Sundays, you and I will see what the Israelites desire for a king, someone with whom they can identify who is like them. You and I are going to see what it's going to be like. And in a spoiler alert, despots are never a good thing, then or now. So as we look today and in the coming Sundays to the leadership of early Israel, I invite us to see ourselves in the characters whose names we know well. See ourselves in Samuel. See ourselves in the Israelites who demand the king. See ourselves in King Saul, the first king off the bat. See ourselves in King David. Do we see ourselves in King Solomon? And after Solomon, it's just a free-for-all. My hope is that you and I see what happens when these people try to take control of the world around them and when they take control away from God. When their compulsion to be God, to manipulate the world, results in tragedy. Because that's what happens to us when we try to manipulate the world. And as we leave this place today and through the coming week, I would invite each of us to consider where to quote the confession from morning prayer, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. I love that line. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. And we have neglected the will of God. Consider where in our everyday decisions to our major life decisions, we pursue or have pursued our own desires that are in contrast to God's desires for us and for those around us, endorsing our own short-sightedness over God's love, sabotaging ourselves because we think we know better than God. I invite you to be in prayer this week. I invite you to hear God in your hearts. And it is my prayer that we have peace in putting choices in God's hands and not our own.
Let us stand and proclaim our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Day by day we magnify thee. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us. Lord, in thee have I trusted. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we might not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in saying the collect for welcome. Light within all light. Christ, uphold and strengthen the witness of the Anglican Communion throughout the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Mexico. By the power of the Spirit, embolden the ministries of all church leaders, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Peter, our bishop, and the clergy of this parish, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth your true and lively word and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. We ask that you rule in the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald, our president, Rick, our governor, and the mayor and members of the town council, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Protect and lift up all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Christ, our hope, hold in your gentle care the bereaved, Grant your healing strength to everyone on our parish prayer list, and to all persons who are or recently have been hospitalized, especially Glenn. We also hold before you those for whom we now pray, either silently or aloud. We pray for all who have died, especially for those we now name silently or aloud. We pray that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings of this life, especially for those blessings we now name silently or aloud. We ask these prayers in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. The peace of the Lord be with you.
Good morning. Please be seated. It is a pleasure to see you all gather this morning for worship of our Lord here at Bethesda by the Sea. We are honored if you are a guest among us, and we would ask that you fill out a, a visitor information card, which you'll find in the pew rack directly in front of you, in the back of that pew. Um, and give it to either us at the back door when you leave, or put it in the offering plate. We are delighted that you are here. We are, we are thrilled. We're also delighted for those joining us on our live stream this morning. We, we love the fact that people worship at Bethesda from Palm Beach to Bombay. It is a wonderful experience in this modern world. The Church Mouse, a reminder that the Church Mouse closes its doors on June the 23rd. They will be open all summer to accept your generous donations that you will make as you clean out um, during the summer, and that they would love to see those. Um, reminder that their sale begins on Monday the 18th, so not tomorrow, but the week following, with 50% off. And then on third, Wednesday, it goes to 75% off. And then the church mouse on Friday is 90% off. So I look forward to seeing you there because I will be. <laughs> Vacation Bible School is from June the 25th to June the 29th. I invite you, if you know any young ones who would um, be a part of that, to let us know at the church um, to register so we know to expect them as well. We also thank you very much for joining us this morning, Doctor. We are delighted that you are here. Um, Hal Peicher is away at a conference. Uh, Father James is on sabbatical. I hope that you're keeping up with his blog. It's wonderful to see where they are. And Eli and Hannah fly out in about half an hour to join him um, across the pond as well. So they will be, keep them in your prayers as they travel. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit.
sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ is We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father,
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
today we send forth Jan Shoebridge to share communion with Jane Caruso and with Donna Skeen. In the name of the Bethesda family of God, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. May God go before you as you travel, Jesus stand beside you as you minister, and the Holy Spirit empower all that you do. For we who are many are one body. For we all share. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world in the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Amen.